I know the title of this video is how to build a sub 50 millisecond rag pipeline. But first, let me explain to you why we would even want rag this quick. When you're building a voice AI system, by far the most difficult task is prompting the LLM correctly. And with creating a good prompt, it's not only about what you write, but also just as much about what you don't write. I found that multiple instructions that are pretty ambiguous about which one to choose or which one to follow at that moment in time is the best and most consistent way to start adding unreliability in your LLM's responses. Having these massive complicated prompts with a ton of if this happens, then do this is why your agents are unreliable. And this is exactly where a sub 50 millisecond rag pipeline becomes so valuable. Its job is to inject the relevant context and instructions the LLM needs for that specific moment. What this does is helps the prompt stay extremely lean, helps to keep the prompt focused and allows our LLMs or our voice agents to be extremely confident with their answers. And that's exactly the kind of pipeline we're building today. Okay, so let me give you an example of this system to make it just a bit more clear because I think it's hard to visualize what I'm even explaining just by me saying it. Okay, so if you're watching this video, I'm gonna make an assumption that you're an intermediate uh, voice AI developer or obviously higher, um, but that doesn't matter if you're not because I will quickly explain you know, what the voice AI agent pipeline or voice AI system looks like, how we get a user's verbal query, and then how we get an AI response or AI verbal response. Now, I think it's also useful even if you do know to just you know, get this reminded so that you can then see what our system looks like in comparison with our RAG pipeline. So speech turned into text, text used as a query for the LLM. The LLM is obviously going to have its big system prompt and the user's query, what, it, that, what that user just said. The LLM gives us a response back, which is going to be in text. Then that text is sent to the text-to-speech model which synthesizes that response into a verbal response or speech. So users verbal query goes through this pipeline and we get an AI verbal response back. Now, our system looks a little bit different. Before the LLM gets the speech to text or what the user just said, we first query our RAG database, obviously sub 50 milliseconds to make sure that the latency is low and we get back our most relevant results five, 10 most relevant context or instructions, and we pass them into the LLM's system prompt before it responds. So now the LLM is gonna have that, you know, relevant context in its system prompt, as well as what the user just said in the query, and then it's gonna respond, and then that's gonna be synthesized into speech. Now, if we have this example here, where, you know, we have an outbound voice agent, and it calls leads after they submit a form. This can be done for tons of different services, home services, tree removal, whatever it be, this can be implemented for. Now, these types of calls, they have hundreds of objections. In fact, they probably have thousands of different objections that could be you know, set. And the LLM needs to know the way to respond to these objections. Otherwise, you know, it's potentially gonna have unreliable responses, which you know, the company that you're building this for, or if you're building it for yourself, you're not gonna like because it didn't know how to respond. Now, instead of just taking those hundreds or thousands of objections and then just chucking them into the system prompt like we have to do with this approach, we can put them into a vector database and our RAG database so that when the user queries and says the objection, that objection is then passed into the LLM system prompt before it responds. This way, the LLM is going to know exactly how to respond because one of the only objections that it has and how to handle that objection in its system prompt is the one that the user just said, which makes it so obvious and clear for the LLM on how and what to say. Okay, so here we are in Cursor. Obviously, to get this level of latency, we do need to be running this pi pipeline within code. Um, it is impossible to get 50 millisecond latency on a platform like N8N or Make.com. You have to be running these things locally on a instance or on your own computer. Um, because sending HTTP requests to embedding models or to vector search uh, stores would take too long. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean this is going to be difficult to understand. This, I've gonna, I'm going to make this as simple. I've made the choices within the code, have made it as simple as possible. You don't have to do much optimization. You don't have to do much work. Everything is within this code and all the choices I've made to get this low level of latency um, also balance price and ease of use and everything like that. So it's still going to be very easy. Now, in case you don't know how RAG works, uh, we take a query. So 
the speech to text, what they said, like I mentioned um, just previously. And then we get the embeddings of that text and then search the vector store, or sorry, we get the vector of the text using an embedding model and then search a vector store with those vectors and find the most relevant, basically multi-dimensional um, vectors that are closest to the vector we just embedded. So then we get back those results and we go from there. <clears throat> now, for our technology, we're using a vector search tool called Qdrant. It is extremely quick, like the fastest solution I found so far. It is open source. You get a free cluster, which you can run a lot of rag on. So you probably won't have to upgrade for a while until obviously you're doing a really high volume, but it's a very good place to start off so that you can also get a grips of this technology and understand how we're even doing rag this quick. Um, everything about it is just the perfect solution. So we're going to uh, use Qdrum. We're also using sentence underscore transformers, which is a uh, Python package by Hugging Face, which allows us to run embedding models, re-ranking models, models like that locally, um, and it's perfect for the code we need. So we're going to need to get the Qdrum URL and Qdrum API key. Now, I will show you how to do that. You're going to want to sign up. So I'm going to log in uh, if you haven't created an account yet. You're going to want to create a free cluster, which I already said is free, your first one. Now, when you're creating it, make sure to choose the region closest to you. So on AWS, you have the most options, whether that be Virginia, California, Oregon, etc. Uh, choose the region closest to you because this is going to make a big difference in the latency of your rag pipeline. So this is really important. Now, once you've created your free cluster, you're going to probably be given your API key instantly. So if you have copy that, if not, then you go into API keys and create one. And then to get the URL, we're going to go down here and just copy this. Now, both those things need to be used. So either put them in the .n file or if you're using Replit, things like that, put it in the secrets section. Um, it's very, very simple. Those are the things we need. And next, we also have to create a scenarios or collection name. So I've just named this tree scenarios because the collection um, I'm talking about in this demo is all about objections for tree removal services. So that's why I've called it tree scenarios. Um, we also have the embedding model name. Make sure you're using static retrieval MRL ENV1. This is a huge factor for getting the latency we have. Now, this is a CPU heavy model. So I said I wanted to make this thing as cheap as possible, as easy as possible, everything like that. And I've chose this embedding model because of that um, as a factor. Now, this embedding model is a CPU model, which basically means it is extremely quick on CPUs, which is really important to me because GPUs are expensive. To run code on an instance or a computer that has a GPU is really, really expensive. There's no real cheap options for that. And so I wanted really fast rag on CPU computers. So this is why we're using um, this embedding model. And just, just for your information, this embedding model is about 96% state of the art, meaning it is just 96% as good as the best embedding models out there. So it is not perfect, but we have to have a bit of a, uh, you know, loss because of how quick it is and how good it is on a CPU, because most other embedding models will be run on GPUs because they're pretty big and large. And so it's best to run them on um, GPUs to get that speed that we need. But this embedding model runs on my CPU on my MacBook and on another instance that I have it running on at like 0.5 of a millisecond. So half a millisecond to embed text, which is really, really, really quick. So to start off with the code, now that we're actually going into the rag pipeline, we initialize the model. So we actually initialize the embedding model. Uh, the first time you initialize it, it's going to download because obviously you know, every embodying, em, sorry, every embodying, every embedding model is different. Um, so it's going to download for the first time. We also warm up the embedding model. So we just, you know, get to the vectors of this warm up sentence just to get the embedding model warm because this affects latency as well. Then we will actually, then we actually need to initialize the QGIMP client. Now, this is really important. We have these settings right here, which basically allow the clients to be warm and you know, reuse the connections as much as possible so that we can reduce our latency even more. So copy these uh, settings. And also I forgot to mention, but all the resources for this video will be down in the description below in my WAP community. So just click into that and you can 
download this all for free and just basically play around with it or send it to an AI and get it to uh, generate, you know, whatever you want from this. But uh, all the logic is within this code, so it will know what to do from there. So once we have these settings, we pass them into the um, initialization of the client. Let me not mess things up in this code. Um, and we get the QGENT client now. We also get the collection or create the collection. And then we are done with the initializing and warming up of the embedding models. So we also have this function right here called embed query text. I mean, this does what you would think it does. It takes the query text and embeds it using our embedding model. We also get back, we also have a function called search scenarios in QDRINT, which is again, what you would expect. We take the vectors got like, we take the vectors that we got from the embedding model and we search the QDRINT vector database based on those vectors. Um, next we have, and obviously this formats things and does it nicely, um, et cetera. But for the most part, that's what it does. Then we have print results. Again, this is self-explanatory. It prints the results that we get back from QDRINT. We also have a function called warm up QDRINT client. We actually want to warm it up. So again, that our latency is even lower. And then we have main, which basically does and takes all these functions together to get our rag pipeline running. So what I can do is I can do Python rag underscore pipeline, and you can see what's going to happen. So we'll see initialize embedding model, um, warming up the embedding model, etc. And we well, we got an error because tree scenarios doesn't exist, which I will create in a second. So that is our rag pipeline. Essentially, all the code is there. It is very, very simple. The main part of it is just how we're doing things and the syntax and all of that doesn't matter to tell you how to do it because you can just copy this code from the resource hub. So one thing we do need to do is obviously you know, since you saw the collection isn't created, so we need to create a collection and we need to input our vector uh, or the things that we want to store in that vector database. And so the way I do this and the way you should do this based on the code that I have is format your um, the things that you're saving into this vector database like this. And so because the rag is happening with the what the uh, user said, so the query is what the user said, we format our uh, the things in our database like this. So we have this user says as examples for the embedding models to be you know more similar and to actually get the correct um, objections based on what the user says. <clears throat> so if the user said something like your estimate is too expensive, it is pretty obvious that this scenario right here is going to be the one that gets returned as the most confident score because you know it is the most similar to what we said and we queried the rag vector search with. We also have assistant says because, you know, potentially if the assistant said something like, um, you know, are you worried about the price? And the person said yes, then the objection isn't said by the user, but by the assistant in the way that, yes, the objection is there, but it's not the way that it was said in the conversation was by the assistant asking that and then the user saying yes. So that's why we also have assistant says. We also have context and response guidelines. So this is when this is the things that are going to be basically inputted into the AI. So um, it might input if the user states the price estimate for tree service is too high, then your response guideline is to acknowledge the budget concerns, explain cost factors, um, highlight value of professional service and safety, offer to view, offer to review estimate, um, etc. Now you, you can put whatever you want in the context and response guidelines. Obviously, um, you're going to actually make this the way that you want to do. So I have 67 scenarios here. So again, this code is going to be in, in the WAP community. So I'm just going to run Python on update underscore scenarios.py and it's going to take all these scenarios and input them. Well, first embed them, obviously, because we need to send those embeddings to the vector search. And as you can see, process all the scenarios. And so now we have 67 scenarios in our rag pipeline. So now we can actually run the rag pipeline tool to see the latency we get. And I will mention something in a second. So it's going to initialize the embedding model, warm up the embedding model, initialize the async QDRINT client and warm up the QDRINT client. And then now we have our rag pipeline ready and it is going to allow me to search the query. So I'm just going to put in something like user. Actually, let's take a look at the update scenarios. Let's see. So user, if, if the user says, what if someone gets hurt? Question mark. And we will see our scenarios come back in 
you saw that is literally instant. So um, as you can see here, user is concerned about liability if something goes wrong. That is clearly the most correct scenario and instruction and context for what I said, because I said something like, what if someone gets hurt? And so we get back the context and the response guidelines, which would be inputted into the LLM's LLM's system prompt before it generates its response. So explain that the professional companies are fully insured specifically to cover potential damages or injuries, highlight that hiring professional transfers the liability risk from the owner, homeowner to the etc. So here we have to the um, insured company. So clearly uh, that is the best, you know, objection answer um, and context and instructions to input into the system prompt. We also have other um, results because obviously we want to add and get back the top five just in case the rag doesn't get and doesn't know exactly which one to get. So that's why we do five. So this one, uh, the, you know, the actual objection is the user believes the tree will eventually fall on its own and prefers to wait. Um, then we also have uh, wrong number, wrong person. And we have other scenarios that don't matter because the top one is the one that we want. Now, if we actually look at the res uh, processing time, we see a number that we don't want to see. We see 0 0.1656 seconds. Now, I will tell you why the latency is actually 0 0.165 compared to the advertised 50 milliseconds, which I've been preaching about the whole video. The reason why we are at 0 0.165 seconds uh, latency, which is 100 milliseconds or 150 milliseconds, is because my cluster is in America. So this cluster, I've deployed four other clients in America, and so that's why I have it in America, um, and I'm in London, and so the time it takes for the query to send physically to America is like 100 milliseconds. So it's actually the latency, if you're in America and you're sending it to an American cluster, will look like 50 milliseconds. And I can show you this is the case by going into my terminal and sending a query to a hosted instance I have in America, which will, you know, get the query in America, send the query to Qdrin in America and get back the uh, response in America. And then we can actually see the times of what the rag would look like if I sent it in America. <laughs> so all of that to say, here is what the actual latency looks like. So I'm going to press enter. And then in the logs, we're going to see the actual time it took for the rag to process. So let's run it. It's not being warm. It's not nothing. And you can see the response is basic. And as you saw, the response is basically instant. Now, I do have a different um, collection running here. So this is all going to be blurred because it is not about the tree services. But if we take a look at it's still all the same process and still all the same code. Um, but yeah, if we look at the uh, logs, we can see the embedding time took 0 0.0012 seconds. So that is actually a tenth of a millisecond, I believe, or a twelfth of a millisecond, which is absolutely insane how quick the embedding is. We get the Qdrin async search time because this is in America. We get it back in 0 0.4 millisecond, uh, four milliseconds. Sorry. So we get sub five milliseconds response time from Qdrin, which is absolutely insane. And this was when it wasn't warm. So if I were to just rerun it maybe three times, now it's going to be warm. We're going to get lower latencies than that. So we get 0 0.021 milliseconds. We get 0 0.18, which is 18 milliseconds to get rag. So it is even quicker than the advertised. So a second ago, it just looked like I lied. And now I lied in a way that it's even quicker than, you know, I advertised. So the only reason why this number is so high is because I'm in America and I'm sending a request to a US um, server. And then that has to come all the way back to me in the UK. And that's what's taking so long because the embeddings are still the same, you know, 0 0.021. I mean, slightly longer um, because this is running on a slightly beefier computer. But yeah, that is the reg. Everything that we are doing is within this code. So, you know, please find the resources, the resource down in the description below, because that's going to give you all the necessary information on how to actually, you know, how the code works. There's obviously more to the code than I said, but I don't want to necessarily say certain things that don't matter in the video. Like the, the syntax for querying uh, Qdrant doesn't matter. Like the, I'm not going to talk about that in this video because it's not the main like goal of this video. So that's why, you know, it's really important that you grab the resource down in the description below.